Here's the candy. So April 8th is the great American solar eclipse. And now here in Jacksonville, we're not going to get totality, but you can still watch it. So we brought in our science extraordinaire from the Jacksonville Museum of Science and History, Eddie Whistler. Thanks for coming by, Eddie. Uh, it's an extraordinary pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate you stopping by. We've had you on here a few times talking about, you know, different science topics. And this one is one of my favorites because it's something everybody can enjoy. Yeah, it's one of my favorites, too, because in the planetarium, we can make it come to life. But we can also make it come to life at home. And so uh, I brought out my little plush dolls right here of the Earth. Oh, so cute, right? But at home, if you had something about the size of a basketball, uh, then something about the size of a tennis ball would do for the moon. Right now, what I would like for you to do is go ahead and take that and walk back the distance that you think. So now we have the size of the Earth and the size of the moon to scale. Okay. But we haven't spaced them out to scale. Mm -hmm. So take a guess, if that was the size of the moon and this was the size of the Earth, how far away would the moon well, be? Well, everything you see in pictures, usually it's like this close. But this doesn't seem right because it would be way too close in our night sky. So I'm going to guess... I know it's a pretty decent distance. Um, I'm gonna say right about here. Okay, right about anchor that right there. And we will stretch this out because I measured it earlier. 12 circumferences oh of the earth. Okay, it goes back further yes, than uh, what I was thinking here. Yeah, but you're not bad, you're not bad. Close? Here we are. So imagine, especially if we could get our cameraman to come around to the back here, imagine how well lined up these two bodies need to be with the sun behind you at home watching this. Imagine what it takes in order to place a shadow on that distant Earth from this distance here. Now, can you tell me about, you know, why doesn't it put an eclipse on, I guess, the whole Earth? Or why don't we see it every month? That is my bigger question. Why don't we get an eclipse every month? Because every month we have a new moon. So this is a great question because if the moon orbited in the exact same plane around Earth that Earth orbits around the sun, then we would get an eclipse faithfully every single month, but that's not the case. Um, the moon's, now I'm gonna embellish here, it's not to scale, but instead of, let's say I'm the sun back here and uh, the moon doesn't, it's not, perfectly in an orbit around the Earth. Instead, typically, uh, the, the, the moon's orbit is at a five degree tilt. And so a lot of times when the moon is coming around, uh, it's riding too high. The, the shadow is cast off over top or below the Earth and the shadow would never land on the surface of the Earth. And so it's only at those rare times where the moon's orbital plane is intersecting with the Earth and Sun orbital plane that we're lucky enough to get an eclipse somewhere on Earth. All right, so let's talk about next um, how you can view it. Uh, so uh, here in Jacksonville, we're only gonna get 64%, but you can still enjoy it, right? Yeah, oh yeah, you can enjoy it. Um, there's a couple things that you could do. First off, before any of the eclipse happens, get under a tree and take some pictures of the shadows that are cast onto the ground. Okay. That's before. Just do it earlier in the day because the peak is at right around 3 o'clock. And so take a picture of some, uh, some, some shadows that are falling on the surface from daylight passing through trees. But then do it at 3 o'clock. Take those same pictures and compare back and forth and mm -hmm. see what the difference is. Um, because there's less sunlight coming at us, there's an effect. And I don't want to tell you that, what that is. I want you to check it out for yourself. All right. The second thing that you could do is, and you need these, because mm. even if you were 99% covered, you still need to have these. Mm. Because even 1%, even a fraction of 1% of sunlight is too much for your eyes and can get injured. And so you're going to wear these, and you're just going to see that the sun has a big old bite taken out of it. Um, and we'll start that throughout the entirety of the eclipse. It's not something that you have to be there for the exact second. There's no countdown in Jacksonville. There's mm -hmm. nothing like that. But over the course of the, let's say an hour and a half before three o'clock, and then the hour and a half after, with three o'clock being the maximum, 
then you're just gonna watch as the moon moves in front of the sun. Well, okay, so a lot of people in the, along the first coast may not be going to the path of totality, yeah. but where can they go to maybe learn more about this or even watch the eclipse here, maybe associated with Mosh? Come and learn about eclipses, not just this one specifically, but what it might be like to be part of an alien eclipse on a different world. Oh, wow. We have those kinds of vistas laid out for us to see and investigate not only that, but how eclipses bring us to like bedrock, uh, some really fundamental truths about the universe. And scientists have learned about these things utilizing eclipses as natural experiments. And so all of these stories are gonna kind of be woven in on the night of April 5th and April 6th. So that's Friday night and Saturday night. Doors to the museum will open at 6.30. Can't wait to do these shows for audiences. Well, I hope so too. I mean, just getting everybody out and interested in science. Thanks very much, yeah. Eddie, for uh, stopping by and talking oh, with us of here. Of course. All right. All right, cheers.